Poverty and homelessness in this state is problematic, which is very sad, and EV prices crash. Today, I read an article on ZeroHedge.com written by Tyler Durden, likely a pseudonym for writers on Zero Hedge, titled, 20% of California lives in poverty, what's going on? The author of this article starts out by saying, on a cost-adjusted basis, California leads the nation in percentage living in poverty. Now here's what is interesting. The author said California is not only home to by far the highest number of billionaires in the U.S., but it also suffers from the highest proportion of Americans living in poverty and the widest gap between middle and upper middle income earners of any state. It endures among the U.S.'s highest rates of unemployment as well as massive net out-migration and exodus that has increased sharply since 2019. It also has 30% of the nation's homeless population, with some now living in furnished caves. Here are my thoughts. If we reflect on history, there have been instances when trends that started in California eventually made their way to other states. Let's hope in this instance, we don't see that happen. It would be nice if some of these problems could be resolved at the state level in California. I hate to read about unemployed people, and it is sad to hear about such a high percentage of homeless people. What's frightening to me is this is what is happening during a period when our economy is supposedly booming if you are to believe the mainstream media and some politicians. What in the world might this situation be like if our economy enters a deep, ugly recession? If companies tighten their belts, this could result in higher unemployment and even more out-migration as people look for jobs elsewhere. Not all jobs are remote. Some people may need to move to another state to find new employment. Getting back to the article, the author referenced a recent survey of California opinion some 57% of respondents said the state was headed in the wrong direction, up from 37% in 2020. Residents of most states hold positive feelings for their state, but not in California, where four in 10 people are considering an exit. Here are my thoughts. This does not come as a surprise to me. I have spoken with some people who currently live in California, and this pretty much sums up how they feel. One individual told me California was a paradise when he moved there in the 1960s. He said it is nothing like it once was. He loved the beaches and the car culture back then, but California is now a shadow of its former self. From what he described, it is very sad. Let's hope what is happening in California turns around soon for the sake of everyone. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I read another interesting article today. This one was on CNBC.com, written by Kayla Ginsky, titled, Used EV Price Crash Keeps Getting Deeper with Premium Brand Idea History. The author of this article referenced what happened back in February when used vehicle prices dipped below used gasoline-powered vehicle prices for the first time ever. And the pricing cliff keeps getting steeper as car buyers reject any premium tag formerly associated with EVs. The author said the decline has been dramatic over the past year. In June 2023, average used EV prices were over 25% higher than used gas car prices, but in May, used EVs were on average 8% lower than the average price for a used gasoline-powered car in the U.S. Now here's what is interesting. According to IC Cars, over the past year, gasoline-powered used vehicle prices have declined between 3 to 7 percent, while electric vehicle prices have decreased 30 to 39 percent. Well, my friends, there are a variety of ways to look at all of this. People who love not having to worry about oil changes or going to gas stations may not care about vehicle depreciation, especially if they plan to keep their EV for many years into the future. Let's hope if they do keep these vehicles for many years into the future, they don't have to deal with expensive repairs or expensive drive battery replacement. For people who like to trade in their vehicle every couple of years, depreciation may be a big problem for them unless they have deep pockets. Here in America, there are people who love their EVs and there are people who want nothing to do with them at all. 
Some people don't want to worry about range limitations or traveling to a charging station just to find out it is not operational. Some people are afraid of small levels of electromagnetic radiation. Others don't want to worry about the cost to replace the battery down the road. There are other people who love the fact that some of these cars supposedly require less service. With all that said, Hertz dumped a lot of Teslas on the market recently. I don't want to get into a debate today about internal combustion engine vehicles versus electric vehicles. I'd rather focus on the depreciation. Unless you time the market right and buy the right type of collector car, you generally lose money over time because cars are a depreciating liability. Some people overextend themselves when purchasing a new car because they want the nicest car possible. When things don't go as planned in life, people like this often struggle to make the payment. I'm really surprised we haven't heard more about vehicle repossessions in the news after all of the madness in the past few years where people were paying thousands and in some cases tens of thousands of dollars over MSRP for a new vehicle. I read stories about people paying tens of thousands of dollars over MSRP for high-end vehicles that were in short supply. Some people who had a fear of missing out did whatever was necessary to buy what they wanted. I sure hope they love those cars because a lot of these people are probably in a terrible negative equity position. I'd prefer to drive something inexpensive and keep my money invested in assets that provide a financial return. I also don't need to worry about door dings or depreciation, and I like the fact that my insurance and vehicle registration costs less than a newer, nicer vehicle. But that's just me. I'm more frugal than most people. For some Americans, a new car is an emotional purchase. They are often influenced by the commercials on television. You see a beautiful young couple driving in a convertible along the seaside. They are smiling and their hair is blowing in the breeze. Some consumers associate a new car with happiness because it is portrayed in these types of commercials. People who buy a new car may be happy at first because the purchase is exciting and a new car is always fun, but that happiness generally fades pretty quickly. Then the payment remains. And nowadays, people are taking out 72 month, 84 month, 96 month, and even 108 month car loans. I hope some of these new cars last as long as the car loans. I don't think some modern cars are built as well. Sure, they have fancy new features, but I don't think the durability is the same as some older cars. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.